My name is Nickel, oh Nickel, and if you guys remember from a long time ago, we talked about a Chinese game that was basically taking elements from Overwatch and putting it into a mobile version of it. And those very few images that we talked about were really all we knew about that game at that point. But now, a ton of footage for that game is available for us to look at. So we're going to be revisiting it with all this new information and take a look at the more now completed version, the most blatant copy of Overwatch ever. And for some of the people that were saying that it wasn't that similar, after looking through all of the new footage, this is crazy how close they're trying to be to Overwatch, even just in terms of the design elements. So one of the things we really didn't get to see about this game was the actual in-game footage, and now we can see that. But before we get to the in-game footage, let's just take a look at a couple of the characters. Some of them we might have talked about before, but now we can see them with the footage, and some of them don't seem to have been a part of the game back then. So if you look at this character here, it's basically trying to go for the Winston animal type of character, except it seems like they combined it with Zarya. Zarya's weapon, Zarya's stance. It just seems like a mashup of those two characters. And we even have the version of this panda with glasses on, on the right, as well as Kung Fu Panda, I guess, on the bottom. But it's also really weird that they're using the exact same rank symbols for this game straight out of Overwatch. And not all of the characters are straight from Overwatch. Obviously, this is a Stormtrooper. This character is some kind of mashup between Tracer and Lucio, maybe? This one looks like it combines the hat from Anna's Captain Amari skin with her traditional eye patch and elements of Soldier 76 all into one character. This is the one that's similar to Widowmaker. This is Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII if he were to act like Genji. And by the way, one of the new things they added was that now all of these characters have skins. So a lot has changed over the course of the year. This one is basically Mercy, except that she has a gun instead of a staff, and she has stockings instead of pants. And you can see she has her uh, nurse skin there as well. Then we have the Diva-esque character, the pretty much exact version of Reinhardt except with the sword. This is the guy that we saw last time that jumped up in the air and kind of shoots down like Pharah. And then this is basically Roadhog straight out of Mad Max with a little bit of saw added to it via that doll. This one's really funny because obviously it's supposed to be Hanzo because he has a bow and arrow. But one of the skins that they added is of a Sylvester Stallone looking character of the Rambo era. McCree if McCree was a woman, even complete with a robotic arm, the cowboy hat, just less pants as usual. So that's a rundown of some of the characters, but the part that's the most interesting is we finally get to see what this whole smorgasbord looks like in action now. So the very first thing that we see is the McCree character with the Hanzo and Diva characters in front of them running around on a map that looks somewhat reminiscent of Hollywood. And remember, this is actually on a phone, so the graphics won't be the same quality as a PC, but it's crazy how similar this ended up being. If you notice on the floor, they actually have the payload lines and you actually get to see a whole team fight here. But it just seems like it's happening in slow motion. The death animation is pretty great. She just uh, jumps up in the air and does the splits. That's how you know she's a goner. So when she dies for the first time, you actually get to see the spawn and she comes out and it has the exact same sheath over it or whatever you want to call that that has the plus on it like we have in Overwatch. That thing below the bull here on the statue is actually the logo of the game. So they're integrating their own logo into the game. And that's the logo right there too between the two palm trees. So now we get to see this from the enemy's perspective for a brief second as the Roadhog Mad Max character tries to hook through the choke. If you didn't notice, the health packs also look the same. This is literally just a mobile attempt at Overwatch, just way more fleshed out now than before. So if you saw that right there, it seems like it was this McCree's version of an ult, which was to cross the two guns and then fire really fast and somehow somebody died. So maybe it has the same element of locking on like Deadeye would, except that it's not as clear visually. It's kind of surprising that there's so much going on at the same time, considering this is on a phone. This is probably the kind of game you could use to heat up your phone enough to cook an egg on it. And so here we get to see Widow for a brief second using her scope, which looks more or less the same. So on the Temple of Anubis map, we actually see the point here, which is a circle. And apparently there's only one way to attack the point, which is from the front. Kind of a strange design choice for that, but when Mercy comes around the back, we can see where that payload is going to lead to. And it is kind of weird that this Mercy is super offensive, so maybe she doesn't really play the role of a healer as much as we would expect her to. I mean, we see the Roadhog and he hooks just like we'd expect 
effect, but this Mercy is firing as the primary function instead of healing. But you can see right here for the first time, she actually heals the McCree character just for a second and then lets her die. So it's really bizarre to see that, that they're encouraging the Mercy character to be offensive. And when she does heal, it kind of looks like Mercy's healing beam in Overwatch. It's just that long stream of healing kind of curbs sometimes. Even her ult is the exact same. She raises her hand, the wings come up, and she reses her team. It's crazy how similar this is and how far they're still pushing this along. I'll show you guys one of the games as Sephiroth Genji, which looks like it takes place in their Li Zhang Tower, except theirs actually has this little moat, which is kind of a different choice. And so this Genji character throws one of these knives at a time and then reloads them by putting three into his pocket. Being able to aim on the phone seems like it would be really, really hard, but maybe there's some kind of aim assist going on or something to help this out. So if you didn't notice already, the ult is actually charging up in the bottom of the screen, just like it would in Overwatch. And here we can see that Genji has 70% ult charge. And when the soldier character uses his ult, it's the exact same thing as soldier from Overwatch. It has the hologram of the visor go across his face. So it's very clear that he's using it and nothing really is different about it. There's the Reinhardt character, which has the same shield as Reinhardt in Overwatch. And it's just crazy how similar this is. And after we talked about this before, when we only had little glimpses of it, I think giving it the benefit of the doubt and assuming that it would branch off in a different direction was something that seemed possible, sort of. But the way that they ended up building it over the last year makes it even more similar to Overwatch than it was before. So something that this game didn't have when we first took a look at it was this whole hero selection aspect to the website. And you can see that it's actually broken down into, you probably guessed, four sections that have identical icons to Overwatch, except the names are different. So we have the Assault class, which has the majority of the characters, the Reloading class, which has two of them, Defense only has one, and Auxiliary we have two. So even the symbols don't really seem like they make sense with what the characters are, regardless of what the names are, because we have the shield for what looks like it's supposed to be support and defense has a plus as if it is supposed to be support. So it, it's all messed up, but we can actually see these characters names now. So, so the Mercy character is called Mechanical Angel Sophia. And basically they all have their own little stories and her story has to do with a large number of refugees being sent somewhere and that in order to improve the efficiency of the wounded refugees of the wounded refugees scientists in general i guess developed battlefield medical robots and apparently some of them have their own consciousness and mechanical angel sophia is basically a robot that has her own consciousness the abilities are exactly like you'd expect from the gameplay footage bullets healing flying to someone and of course the res the diva character after looking at this might actually be closer to lucio because she has to do with sound and stuff so her name is royal sound division alice a lot of them kind of have this format of a name where it has some kind of prefix, a colon, and then the actual name. So the thing that we had really no idea about with this character, Alice, before was that she's blind, I guess? It said that she had childhood blindness, was abandoned by her parents, and was an old man raised up. So basically this talks about how much she loves music and stuff and her abilities look music related. This one called Cure allows Alice to basically heal, restore value of life. But her ult is called Farewell Myanmar. Alice and Xiao Meng sing together for their own and nearby teammates to quickly restore the value of life during the magic of Alice's immune injury but cannot move or attack. So I don't see a character named Xiao Ming, so I don't really know what that means. Maybe it's her mech, I don't know. But we do have a Xiao Li, which is the Saffroth character. But then we have our guy Reinhardt with Predator style dreadlocks, who's titled The Last Knight Don Quixote. That is the weirdest name to give to this character. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Don Quixote the book, but it's, it's pretty famous and... For some reason, this Reinhardt looking character is named that. And then we have our Zarya Winston mashup, Panda Warrior, Penta, who apparently has to do with protruding into Umbrella Biogene Laboratory. So obviously there's some Resident Evil reference there, except it kind of goes in a different direction. It says that it triggered a defense program that led to a laboratory explosion. And then after the explosion, the Dawn Fighters found a young panda in the ruins. And when he was brought back to the camp, they called him Panta. So his abilities are basically the same thing as Winston. He can jump in the air, 
He can drop this bubble, and his ult gives him a bunch of life. Roadhog has this insanely creepy doll as one of his abilities, and apparently this doll is called a bomb doll. Throwing doll bombs hit the enemy can cause 400 damage and dizziness. So that's kind of strange, but this looks just like it's straight out of Mad Max combined with Roadhog. And I didn't notice this before, but he actually has medals pinned onto his skin, which is kind of gross. But apparently this guy, Madman Ledon, is from California. So <laughs> this is China's interpretation of a Californian, I guess. And uh, Hanzo slash Arrow is called By the Wind Who, King of the Eye. One of the things they used to describe him is by saying that in order to find a lover, he joined the Guardian of the Dawn. So that's one way to find a lover, I guess. McCree here is actually called Jenny. And uh, she is American, obviously. So they call her a righteous messenger. And she maintained the local order with six rounds of hands. And whenever, and whenever she uses a gun, there is always a bad guy to fall. It's really great being able to see these characters up close and personal. This guy's name is Izawa or Ize. He claims to be from the future, but maybe he's not. Maybe it's just a crazy guy in a suit running around pretending to be from the future. His bio says that he traveled through space and time, came here to stop it from happening. So even though he looks like the combo of Lucio and Tracer, I think he's supposed to be more along the lines of Tracer, even though the color scheme doesn't really match up. And by looking at his abilities, that's pretty obvious because he can blink three times forward and go back in time. But his ult is different. It actually sends an energy wave, which can penetrate the enemy in the building. So I guess they didn't do the pulse bomb. This one called Technology Madman Downey explains the reason he joined is because the enemy of the enemy is naturally a friend. So we know that this guy can fly like Pharaoh. We've seen that before. But apparently that actually takes up one of his ability slots. But one of his things is a repair robot. So it can only be used on the ground and it restores life. I don't know if we saw that on the footage or not, but that's kind of... Strange. And the Widowmaker one is directly just called Black Widow Natasha. Instead of lowering her heart rate like she has in Overwatch, here apparently the Umbrella Organization researched for her implanted mechanical brain. So she became a protective Umbrella Organization with vicious fangs for hunting down guard members. What? <laughs> this doesn't even make sense. But for some reason she has Junkrat's trap as a part of her arsenal, even though she's Widowmaker. She also has an element of Sombra, it looks like, because this one is called Send, where you throw a delivery device and release it again to send to the location of the device. So she actually has elements of Junkrat, Sombra, and Widowmaker all in one character. This is by far the best name of any character in this whole game. Soldier9527. The best possible thing about this is that they said that he forgot the name of the past, only a code, 9527. So he forgot everything except his locker combination. For some reason, he has a tactical grenade, but it's just a jar of peanut butter. I don't understand the reason for that, but okay. But he still heals and has the auto lock on ult, which we already knew about from before. And then finally, the last character that has a bio is Xiao Li, who is obviously Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII, just acting like Genji, like we said before. The weirdest part about his bio that it says, but because of Li Jiafie knife stunts in his hand, cannot cut off the faith to support down. I don't understand what any of that means, but okay. I wish they had one of these pages for the Stormtrooper character because I want to see that guy's whole story. So anyway, this was really crazy to see. They are still going full force with this game since the last time we talked about it way back when there was just a few glimpses of it. But maybe there are some ideas in this game that Overwatch can take from them. Like maybe that little healing robot thing or whatever that is, is something that can be adapted into Overwatch itself. But let me know down below in the comments if one of these characters had to be an Overwatch, which one would you want it to be? One last thing before I go, if any of you guys want to submit stories for me to talk about in future videos, all you have to do is go to the Underwatch link down below in the description, and once you're there, you can see how to submit news. There's also a place where if you want to have your gameplay featured here on the channel, you can do that there as well. And that's all for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to turn on notifications.